show today. My guest is Andy Ross. How are you today, Andy? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate the time, bud. You know, uh, I like catching people in between when they're not traveling, so it's nice to uh, <laughs> see you're at home for a day or two. Uh, for a day or two. You got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, from what I understand, you're based out of Nashville, but you have country music, you have American Rebel, the brand. Right. You you did, uh, you were on TV for over a decade. Yeah. On the bow hunting show, so I got a lot to go over in a little bit of time. There's a lot to cover, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> If you can give us a maybe a quick background of, of the Andy Ross saga. Yeah, because it's it's interesting how all that ties together. Um, yeah. So I'll just I'll give you the I'll just give you a rundown. You know, we uh, I started making bows, bow and arrows as a hobby. Yeah. And uh, they kind of uh, I got pretty good at it, and we started you know turned it into a business called Ross Archery. And one thing that I needed to do was secure one of the people, one of the personalities like on the outdoor channel to shoot my bow because outdoor TV was really coming on at that time. Right. And I couldn't, we were a new company. They had established agreements with other bow companies. So I thought, well, I got a, I know a guy who's a cameraman. He shoots part-time for jury outdoors. I'll get him to film a couple of my hunts and we'll just make a DVD and put it in the box with the bows and I'll just keep trying. That's awesome, well, the DVD man. got in the hand of the outdoor channel. And the next thing I knew, they were asking me to do a, a show. Yeah. So instead of finding someone to do a show, I ended up doing a show. Then on the show, I wanted it to have a little bit of edge and grit to it. We called it uh, Maximum Archery World Tour. And we kind of treated it like a concert tour. We put all the names yeah. of the species and places and dates we were hunting down the back of a shirt, kind of like a Van Halen concert shirt. And yeah. we filmed travel and the nightlife and the hunt the setup and the good times and bad and, and uh, I could play music so I did some music on the show gotta go hunting blues I wrote you know hunt me down or a blood trail on a white tail and when iTunes and all that came out the music started getting popular gotcha. well, I had a song off the third record off the time to fight record called American Rebel and it went viral as a patriotic anthem um, I also had a song called Cold Dead Hand off the second record that landed me on Counting Cars where Danny built me the second amendment muscle car, which really kind of kind of put fuel behind the music because there was a lot of exposure. They called it Rocked and Loaded. He introduced me as country rocker Andy Ross, which I thought was really cool. And so that that, you know, the music started taking on its own life. So as I mentioned on the third record, Time to Fight, I had American Rebel, it went viral as a patriotic anthem. And then we decided to build a brand around the, the music. We called it the company American Rebel because the yeah. song had just come out and uh, America's patriotic brand. And as of February of this year, American Rebel, we are now a publicly traded company on NASDAQ. And so I tell you this long story because I know we're going to talk about all the ins and outs and all the travel, but it really was. I just loved to bow hunt. I made a bow. I got a TV show. I did music on the show. Uh, had a song that went viral as a patriotic a patriotic anthem, turned it into a brand, and now I'm the CEO of a publicly traded company. And still doing all the above. Yeah, yeah. So, How much of that, because I always tell people, it's kind of the right place, right time. Yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't planned out what you were doing. You were like, I like bow hunting, and all of a sudden. When I, when I made the bow, I did not plan on doing a show. When I did the show, um, so what happened there with the show is the music started getting popular. And as the music got popular, the, the luck, if you will, was that country artists, a lot of country artists are, bo are hunters. Yeah, yeah. And they watched my show. So I was actually getting solicited by professional touring label signed to country artists. Hey, I love your show. You're doing music on your show. Who are you writing with? Hey, I'll write one with you. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm okay. on the show. I don't even have a record deal, and I'm writing with Lee Bryce, yeah, you know? and uh, and Chris Jansen, and and the Davison brothers. So, I wrote a song, uh, particularly with the Davison brothers, and they said, "Hey, why don't you have our producer Doug Grau, who you know uh, worked at Warner Brothers Nashville, discovered and worked and developed Travis Tritt." Little Texas, Jeff wow. Foxworthy produced the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. They said, why don't you have our producer record it? We like the song we wrote. And I said, you think he would go in the studio and record this for me? And they said, yeah, if we ask him to, he's a great guy. He'll, he'll do it. 
So I was at the Iowa Deer Classic, and there was this great big long line. I was signing posters and DVDs, and and you know, to the fans of the show. Yeah. And kids, they they had my they had my music on their phone. Oh my and gosh! Smartphones had come out, right? And so smartphones come out, and uh, I by the time they got up to me, I said, "How did you get my music on your phone?" And they said, well, we went to look on iTunes, but it wasn't there. So we took it off your website. So I called this Doug Grau and I said, hey, um, these guys, you know, my fan base apparently is, is taking this music off the website. There's, you know, iTunes. If we could, we put it on iTunes and they would pay to download it. Could, yeah. could we do that? And he said, Andy, if they will, uh, here I am, I'm at, a, I'm at a trade show, just taking a break <laughs> With my flip phone, right? Yeah. I still had a flip phone. And uh, Doug Grau says to me, Andy, if they'll buy that music, they'll buy a real album. Why don't you come back to town and let's make a record? Wow. And now now we are recording our fourth record together. Doug has become my partner. Uh, he, beca- he When we decided to build a brand around American Rebel, I, be- I was CEO. He became president. And Doug and I have worked hand in hand for 12 years. Wow. It's meant so, to be. Yeah, it's all just it's all just one big blessing after the next. I, I, I feel you. That's how I feel about my my podcast. This was just for me to talk to some friends and all yeah. of a sudden I'm I'm talking to Emmett Smith on the you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. It's like what? Kurt Angle's reaching out to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? It's like so I, I feel you. I know exactly what you're yeah. going through. Yeah. How, how much traveling have you done from, from the start of the bow hunting show to now? Like so I mean, I, I travel, I travel more than half the year. I travel yeah. seven, six, seven, eight months a year, seven, eight, nine months a year. And it's all different kind of travel. Um, to give you an example, when, when we did TV show, Maximum Archery World Tour, I was the host and hunter. A lot of these shows have multiple hunters and mar- yeah. multiple cameramen. So if I'm going to film 13 or 23 episodes in a year, there's only so much archery deer season. So yeah. I've got to go do hunt mountain goats and, and coastal brown bear and spring bear and, and, uh, um, caribou. And, and, you know, I got to go to You're elk and yeah, an early September mule deer hunt and elk hunt, and moose hunt, go to the Yukon, go to Alaska. I shouldn't say got to, I should say get yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I know this sounds a little crazy, but if we didn't get enough shows in the can, by July, the fallback was always to go to Africa because you can put a lot of shows together pretty, you know, if we're missing four, four episodes then we got to go to Africa and it became like, we do not want to have to go to Africa. I mean, once you've done it two or three times, yeah, you're yeah. Only one to six or seven. So, so, uh, you know, we tried to get real efficient and really do, you know, really think of everything. I even did, uh, bow hunted rattlesnakes. I bow hunted sharks. I mean, we were thinking oh of God. all kinds of stuff. I did a rattlesnake blowgun, you know, with blowguns. And, um, but back to travel, that kind of travel was significantly different. I mean, I'm talking, yeah, we're on a, we may be on a commercial airline to, uh, you know, to up to Alaska through Vancouver, but we get to Whitehorse and uh, in the Yukon and, and we're on float planes. I mean, yeah. we're on like cargo type float planes that are, that look no, like they, nothing, you know, nothing. you're not even for sure get off the ground and, and uh, you know, getting into some of these camps and stuff. So it was, it was a lot of, a lot of travel. We, uh, when we went here in the U S a lot of times we traveled by tour bus. We, we kind of, we built a tour bus around the show and that's why it was nice. Max Archery on tour. So we, you know, we traveled all the time. We traveled so much that my cameraman who is a dear, dear friend, like a brother, better be I mean, now love him like a brother. But we traveled so much that we we would get to an airport and just go two different ways and say, I'll see you in five hours. We were yeah. that close that that much that we couldn't even we couldn't even sit by each other on the plane. We would we just different directions. He'd usually go by like these snow globes and stuff that he'd take home to his kids, you know, because he got one everywhere we went. I'd go to the bar. So he didn't <laughs> want to sit by me by the time I got to the plane anyway. <laughs> I always got stickers and patches for my girls. I always whenever uh-huh. I was so when they were sm- now they're they're adults, but, yeah, uh, yeah. When they were smaller, I'd always try and bring something back, just like, hey, yeah, yeah. That's so, pretty yeah, funny he, though. And he was he was he was uh, fun. I just saw him back in Kansas City, but yeah, the travel, um, 
bus and car. And, you know, we had we had a maximum archery truck and, you know, it and you might travel to a hunting camp like Colorado and you're hunting elk. you got a Colorado elk tag and, and nothing's moving. I mean, three days, you know, we got to make TV <laughs> and three days, nothing's happening. We're like, well, I talked to the outfitter in New Mexico. The elk are moving to New Mexico. We got to, So we're off to New Mexico. Get that hunt done. We're back to Colorado. I mean, we're we're going around. We're going around like a, a ping, like a, a, a ping pong or a uh, yeah. What do you call it? The machines with the the ding, pinball ding, ding, ding. pinball machine. We're yeah, going yeah. Like, like a ball and a pinball machine. Well, you know, and it's and and yet your fans that watch the show would never know that, right? Because it's got to no. look seamless and. Hey, we're out here another day, beautiful day in Colorado. And you're like, oh my God, I've been here for, you know, 72 hours and nothing's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to, you know, Mike was, you know, Mike always wanted to get home. You know, he, he was, he was like, let's get this hunt done. Let's get up twice as early as we need to hunt twice as long as we need to scout twice as hard. I want to get this hunt done, this show in the can, this show in this, you know, show in the can and get home. Yeah. And he kept us on, he really kept us on track because you really can't waste a day or two out there. Um, you've only got so much hunting season and you've only got so many tags and you can, you know, you can't rearrange. I just mentioned you could go from Colorado to New Mexico during elk season, but you know, you can't rearrange the whole yeah. U S hunting schedule of when you can hunt and where you can hunt, what speeds. I mean, you got to be there and, and, and get into some crazy places too. I mean, we, you know, we traveled, you talk about traveling, but we traveled a lot by horseback, you know, cool. I mean, it's, it's, you know, up, up mountains with pack mules and, and, uh, uh, you know, float planes and helicopters and, and of course commercial airlines and small, you know, regional jet companies that yeah. you never even heard of. And, and we always had a problem with weight, you know, because they'd only say, you know, 200, well, hundred pounds a piece, 200 pounds for the two of us. Well, we had a hundred plus pounds in camera gear. equipment and bows and I had to travel with two bows in case something would happen to one you know we couldn't just go oh you know we can't it didn't work yeah. yeah or have another bow so so uh, uh we traveled uh we had to travel really light because of all the gear that we had and gear would get lost and I mean it's always a train wreck I was, I was gonna ask you how many, how many times did you show up and, and and you had the TSA tag on your back that it was opened Oh, they opened our stuff all the yeah, time. They had to, right? Yeah, they opened our stuff all the time. I was like, I could just right. imagine that going through the uh, the screener. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know, I mean the you know they're 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 friendly kind of on the bow case. They open it up and it's a bow, but I mean we've got you know we've got knives and you know I mean I I remember getting so much so much uh, heat over uh, some had some snake bite antidote stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was like, well, what they thought I was smuggling drugs or something. I'm like, no, I'm, they're like, what, well, you know, well, because you know, when you're, when you're spotting and stalking and you're in particular areas that are, that are, uh, you're not hunting rattlesnakes, you're just hunting. But mule they're deer. there. The rattlesnakes are, they're like, well, why would you do that? And I'm like, I, I, good question, but I'm doing it. I just, you know, throw it away if you want. I need to go. But, you know, they, they kept me for like two hours talking about this red stuff that's supposed to put on you on you if you get snake bites. I mean, they take, they wanted all kinds of stuff. We'd carry knives and, you know, we'd hunt dangerous games. So sometimes we'd carry, you know, carry handguns and we'd have issues with that. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I mean, that's, that's just a lot of work to get it all packed and properly documented and, and get gone, you know? And that's, I think that's pretty key. You know, I, I got, I got stopped at TSA in, in Bozeman, Montana because of my stapler had a, had a grip on it. Literally got secondary over, went through everything in my bag because of my stapler. Yeah. So I can only imagine when you're actually traveling with real stuff. It's like, yeah. You know, the, the thing about the travel and it's, it's even more so traveling and touring music. It's, it's never the, it's never the destination. That's the work. The hunt was never the yeah. work. Yeah. The, the, the gigs, never the work The 90, you know, 60 to 90 minutes. I'm playing Rocktoberfest. Saturday, I leave uh, in the morning on the bus, on the tour bus. Um, the, the 60 minutes, 75 minutes I'm playing, I would do it for free. The 11 hours in the bus to get there and the where we're going to end up staying and then, you know, the 11 or 12 hours to get home, uh, that's what they pay me for. The, the, that's the so hunt, funny. The hunts, the hunts, 
a blast. The gig's a blast. It's they pay me for the travel. Dude, I my, if you ever listen to any of my old shows, you'll hear me say I travel for a living and I do meetings in between. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Because I mean, I've I've done the same thing. I've had four hour drives from from I'm in Los Angeles, and you know I drive down to to my my most southern uh, store on the border. That's a three and four hour drive for you know a forty five minute meeting, and yeah. then a, sometimes a four hour drive back. It's like yeah, it is what it is. Well, you nailed it. That's exactly that's exactly what it is. And uh, you know, we travel. Uh, you know, an American Rebel, our company. Uh, yeah. That brings a whole different kind of travel. Um, and sometimes I'm doing multiple things, and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that. But you know, American American Rebel business travel, um, and you know, I mean, I'm you're not you're not playing a festival rock fest. Yeah. out in a, a festival area you're not going to a hunting camp and being in the beautiful yukon mountains or alaska mountains or new mexico you know i'm downtown new york yeah. you know i was just in new york for a week doing an investor conference uh, staying at a you know way too fancy of a hotel <laughs> that I'm here today. that's where the conference was yeah and uh, you know and you gotta you gotta kind of take you know okay i got a different wardrobe for that but that, that, you know, I mean, you pack, you pack CEO, American Rebel, uh, investor presentation, the, yeah. the most imaginable, great, you know, uh, plush scenario hotel in, you know, downtown Manhattan. And you got to fly from there to a gig. So you got to pack these clothes, trout, your normal clothes, your stage clothes yeah. you know, and, and get all that. I mean, I know when you go to Hawaii, you got you want some uh, business casual attire and a swimsuit. But I mean, go from go from uh, full blown CEO to stage clothes is kind of crazy. So yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because I always travel with my cowboy boots and my jeans because yeah. yeah. that's what I sell. So right. if, I don't care if some if I'm in Hawaii. I was I was in Pueblo, Colorado. It's 108 degrees. Like, well, you got to wear what you got to wear. So I mean, so I'm in I'm in the boots and it. it I don't mind it, you know, and, but I do, I have to bring the same thing. Like if I want, I have workout clothes and yeah. then I have casual clothes and then I have my, my work clothes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know this isn't about fashion and clothing, but oddly enough, no, it is kind of, I finally <laughs> learned. Yeah. I, well, it is. Yeah, of course. But I mean, uh, you're interested in what I'm doing, but I, I've learned now that, that they would rather, they, they, when I do these investor conferences now, they don't want to see me look like a CEO. They want to yeah. see me look like the guy they saw online. Now that doesn't mean I go in and stage close, but they want to see me just look like Andy Ross, the guy that they that they yeah. Google and saw and stuff. So I've I've really toned that down, thankfully, because I felt out of place, yeah, suit tied up and stuff like that. So you know, um, I've been able to really uh, find middle ground. I think uh, that's. Do you think that comes with age? Because I was the same way, like. Now I just want to be comfortable in my own whatever I'm wearing, yeah. whether it, whether it's a, a tuxedo for well, I'm going out Saturday night with my wife to a a, a speakeasy kind of show, so I got I got to be, get slicked up. But whatever I'm wearing, I just want to be comfortable with what I'm what I'm doing. So it, whether I'm wearing cowboy boots, I've had people pick on me for wearing cowboy boots in L.A. I don't care. So well, like, you know what I mean. We, you can see I got dressed up for you today. <laughs> I put on my, my Canadian tuxedo here. So we're, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so American rebel, it, it's kind of a, the, the, the company. Yeah. You got uh, CC, CCW backpacks, which I think are super cool. Uh, but yeah. you also have the jackets and then you have gun safes and it's, it's yeah. a good amalgamation of, of the second amendment and everything. I mean, it goes with the Corvette obviously, but. All right. Yeah, we, we've been, a, you know, we call ourselves American Rebel, America's patriotic brand. Um, we're, we're a lifestyle brand company, and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that. But, um, you know, we got into Concealed Carry was our first product offering. Yeah. Concealed Carry backpacks, coats, jackets for men and women. They feature our proprietary protection pocket, allows someone who wants to carry to do it in a safe and effective way. Then we started doing handgun boxes. We graduated from handgun boxes to full-size safes. And we were doing really well with our American Rebel safes. Uh, in fact, the dealers call us the safe with an attitude. Um, and they love the safes. We had an OEM factory um, that was building our safes. 
And this factory was the owner. Uh, they have two factories and they in five distribution centers of 400 dealers. And the, the people who were doing that was Champion Safe. You've probably heard of Champion Safe and Superior Safe. Yeah. So they own Champion Safe, Superior Safe, that company, OEM manufactured our product. And we were doing fantastic. But we had the opportunity. Um, Ray Crosby, the owner, had made the decision he wanted to sell the company. And we went to an investment bank to see if we could arrange that kind of capital. And we went to the public market, became a NASDAQ company, yeah. and was able to raise the money. We actually bought out one of the largest competitors in the wow. business. So now American Rebel owns its own, you know, we own our own factories, we own our own distribution centers. We have, you know, roughly 400 stores that are buying, but we also own Champion and Superior Safe um, now is, is in our umbrella. So, uh, oh, yeah, it was. Uh, That's crazy. But, but but if you look at the company, you would think um, you would think that we're a safe company. I mean, that's 95 percent of our sales now. And it's our flagship well, product. Is that units yeah. or is that I mean, I, dollar wise, obviously, it's a huge dollar over a backpack. But I mean, yeah, units, yeah. you don't, yeah, you don't yeah. have to sell one safe and, and 500 backpacks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, we sell a lot of concealed carry, but dollar wise, yeah. you know, revenue wise, it's 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 about the safes. Okay. And and you would look at us and think we're a safe company. And the safe's becoming the new home appliance. So we we love being in this business. We're yeah. real good at it. We got a great distribution and we're gonna take advantage of it. But as I said, we're American Rebel, America's patriotic brand. I wanna see American Rebel beer, I wanna see American Rebel racing parts, American Rebel wheelbarrows, American Rebel horse tack. Maybe someday an American Rebel cowboy hat and boots. Um, I want to. I want Susie to go up to mom and say, "Mom, what's Dad want for Father's Day?" And she says, "Honey, he wants anything with American Rebel on." That's when we'll truly be America's patriotic brand, and that's what we're trying to build is is, is a lifestyle brand company, not just a safe company. And we're working towards that. We're doing that through developing product. We're doing it through licensing. Yeah. Uh, we're doing it through acquisition and uh, we're definitely in an accelerated growth mode. And, uh, and at the end of the day, I just want my microphone and guitar, right? I just want to get out and rock. So uh, we're, we're blending it all in. We could, we should actually talk after the show because we have the company I work for. We made, we made the first production level uh, CCW cowboy boot. And yeah. so uh, we have a, an inside hold and then we have the outsides. Uh, holsters so, uh, uh, we, we should talk yeah yeah making a rebel american rebel one just license it out and yeah we, we've it. got a lot, we've got a lot of distribution and uh we've got a lot of distribution with our concealed carry and we've yeah. got a lot of big things on the uh on the horizon yeah we actually it's interesting because my, my company's owned by the son who of the guy who started in 1948 and the, and the CEO, he's in his seventies now. He was the original kids model, but he he literally works seven days a week. He's it's, it's not a he wasn't just gifted it and he, he's working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It, it it takes work, man. I mean, it it takes a lot of work. I mean, you know that to to pull off your job and and have some success and do what you're doing with the podcast and stuff. And yeah. Everybody, you know, thinks well that you know that fell in his lap and that fell in his lap, and it's a lot of work. I it's dude, so I always, I always joke with people. People always say, "Oh, you're so lucky." Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you know, running. A, you know, there, there's no such thing as nine to five. I mean, the, the guys in New York, they're, you know, they're calling me at, you know, seven in the morning to them is not that early. That's six my time. Yeah. I'm yeah. Them, we're dealing with shareholders, dealing with investors, writing music at night, recording in the studio, rehearsing taking off playing on the weekends. Um, you know, there's no such thing as, as nine to five, but you know, I'm, I'm sure you would agree. Uh, there is a, there is a level of, of, uh, you, know, you know, I feel of, uh, you know, working hard and making your own luck and those types of things. But, you know, when you're blessed with opportunity, whether, however you came about uh, through hard work, through whatever you just, all you can do is be thankful and, and get oh, up yeah. and, be glad you got something to do today. So I'm curious with all the traveling you do, have you always been based out of Nashville? No, I was uh, actually born and raised 
in a small town called Chanute, Kansas. And at about 16 years old, moved to Kansas City. Okay. Um, and I've got most of my, I've, I've lived in Nashville now for about 14 years. Um, but I still go back to Kansas City a lot. In fact, American Rebel has one, you know, half of the whole operations in Kansas City. And we have a corporate office here in Nashville, uh, over here off Music Row, which is just two blocks from where I live. But um, no, I I feel like Nashville's home. I've been here that long. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Kansas City is also home. Well, it's interesting because you had to be near a major airport. And you got BNA now, but you know, yeah. I flew into Kansas City. We opened up a store in Blue Springs, and uh, so I flew into Kansas City and, and then just drove over. But did, you kind of, I mean, you obviously Broadway's right there, Music Music Row, you know. But yeah. you had to be you, you had to be near an airport with all the traveling you do. Yeah, you know, Broadway. Um, of course, that's where everybody who doesn't live here wants to go. It's very touristy. <laughs> it's it's the um, strip. It's, you know, and it's I'll like tell Las you what, Vegas. It, it's right. It is definitely up, you know, Nash Vegas for sure. Yeah. And uh, they, they say it's a, it's a, this is a, a drinking town with a music problem. But, uh, you know, True. anyone who comes here to visit, that's where I would take them. That's not where I hang out. But if you told me, man, I got three days in town, I'd be like, you won't even, no. you won't even get to experience Broadway in three days. There's no need. I mean, it's wonderful. It's fun. It's exciting. It's exactly what the tourists want to see and hear. And uh, that's what I would recommend. And that's when I go down there. I usually go down there when I have someone in town I'm taking down there, whether uh, whether it's business or just friends, yeah. you know, town, family in town. That's definitely what they all want to do. And, uh, you know, when I go down there, I usually get pulled up and I get to set in with like John Stone and Kid Rocks and stuff like that. And it's fun. It, it's fun. And the bands are great. The town's great. But you know, when you live here as long as I have, you end up going, uh, it, it's interesting because the local people plan their local events during the week. Yeah. Because the in the music scene, because most artists are out of town on the weekends. Yeah. They're I mean, Lee, they're Lee Bryce is not here on Friday. He ain't going to yeah. be here. Uh, I'm out of here tomorrow. Um, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm a I'm a small fry in the whole music machine around here. But you know, any artist of any size, or even any, uh, ex, you know, uh, someone trying to be an artist is probably on the road, yeah, playing somewhere, or opening up for somebody, or doing something. So all the events, the record label parties, the ride arounds, the showcases, Monday through Thursday. Yeah, it's it's like like Sunday. You know, everybody rolls back in and. And that's, you know, the weekend's kind of Sunday and Monday. And then, you know, Tuesday, there's ride arounds at the local, at, at, at the Bluebird, at the, you know, at, at the Nashville Soundhouse. I mean, everywhere, everywhere you, you know, everybody's got something going on. Uh, BMI's rooftop parties Tuesday night. Yeah. Uh, you just, you have to learn to say no, or you're going to be out. Seven Every nights. night. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because uh, LA is the same way when, when, Oh. Like, like I never go to Sunset Strip. I don't go to Hollywood because yeah. I, I avoid it. But yeah. when my friends come in town, my aunts, my uncles, first thing they want to yeah. see, they want to see the beach. And then they want to see, you know, Hollywood Walk yeah. of Fame and all that. I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah. That's and like you the, going to Broadway. Take, yeah, that's where you take them. It's interesting on uh, during football season on home games, you you would be, uh, well, you, I'm sure you can imagine, but when people, if you're a, Patriot or a Steeler or like me, a Chiefs fan, um, and you want to go to an away game or two, and you see, oh, our team's playing in Nashville. Yeah, that's the one you want to go to. So the whole Broadway, you know, on on that week on weekends too during football season, half the people look like they're from here, you know, yeah. with Steeler jerseys yeah. on or Patriots yeah. jerseys on or Eagles jerseys on. Um, and they so, use that bridge. I went there last year uh, to Nashville. My daughter lives outside of Knoxville, but yeah. uh, we went to Nashville last uh, last October, and that that bridge they use for the games. I was shocked. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the walk bridge from Broadway over to the and I, I went on it the, the day after, but yeah. uh, just to you know, I was doing my walk around. But they're they're at Broadway partying from open, which man. is early. And uh, they walk right back across that bridge and stay till it closes. Yeah, yeah, that's no joke. I was, I was yeah. really. At least they built like we have a lot of stuff here in LA that never gets used 
the way it's supposed to, you know, a bridge or this or that. Yeah. And I was looking at that bridge every time I've been there. It's, there's been a few people on it, but I'm like, ah, eh, whatever, you know. Yeah. You on game day, it's like, oh man, okay, yeah. I got yeah. you now. Yeah, game day concerts. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, when they do concerts at bridge at uh, at the at the football stadium, there, you know, they they definitely use the bridge. Those uh, and they did, uh, you know, they're doing the road course races down here now, and they're actually running over the bridge, which is really cool. That's pretty neat. So at least at least they're using it though. Indy cars, yeah, 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 yeah. We have that in Long Beach, so we get to we yeah. get to have all the fun stuff. Uh, what's the most influential city you've been in? Well, I mean, Nashville would be the most influential city I've been in because it's just where I've written all my music, right? I mean, it's the city that I mean, I live here now, but yeah, it it, it, it was so meaningful to me. Uh, you know, I moved when I when I had the opportunity to do that first record, you ain't seen crazy yet. I was living in a hotel and I, uh, the embassy over here. And I watched this high rise building be built. And by the time, you know, we got done, we were, we were going to go out and play, but we were going to start writing for the second record. And I thought, well, all my writing partners are here. I yeah. can't. So I thought, well, I'll just get this, this, uh, condo in this building and, and I'll stay here when I'm in town because I can't just stay in the hotel these lengthy times, you know, that many days in a row. And it became home. I mean, I, wow. I was here so much that all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm changing my driver's license. I'm tagging my cars. You're uh, here. And then after, you know, after the kids all went up, the last one went off to college. It's like, I don't even need to keep my place in Kansas City because no one's there. Yeah. And uh, so... I mean, the, the town's meant a lot to me. Um, you know, New York is, is crazy and, and uh, uh, I'm learning how to, you know, work my way around Wall Street and, and do the CEO thing. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I love, uh, you know, I love Nashville. Nashville's home. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wh what do you have coming up? As far as the American Rebel, I know you're you're still doing gigs, so that's yeah, awesome. So, I mean, I so we, we have a we've got a new album coming out, and we're, oh, we're record, we've done all the tracks for it. And I'm just going back in and doing the vocals, and we've already put a single off of it called "All American Heart," and I just did a five week radio tour, which yeah. is exhausting. You you know you're in outside of Green Bay, Wisconsin, for the morning drive, playing two three songs live. And then you're down by Milwaukee midday and you're over by Madison for the, for the, you know, the rush hour drive home. And then you wake up in Waterloo, Iowa, and then you're in Des Moines. And, you know, we went all through Texas and Oklahoma and, and uh, Missouri and Kansas, and Iowa, and Wisconsin, Alabama and Tennessee, and, uh, Virginia, and West Virginia. Um, so that was exhausting. Yeah. And we are working on the new record. Now we're back to playing full band shows. I'm playing rock fest, um, saturday and, and um so we'll, but we'll wind down here right for the fall and winter we won't be out playing all the festivals and stuff are coming right. to an end uh so we'll get the record finished um doing traveling on behalf of, of american rebel as well i've got another investor conference in november in new york we'll be at um traveling out to our we have a factory now in provo utah oh, that wow. we acquired. i've got to uh, go out there too it's a beautiful beautiful uh, city um, so just, just all over the place. You ever do anything for the rodeo NFR? I have not. No, do NASCAR events. I uh, play a lot of NASCAR events, a lot of, a lot of, uh, biker rallies, a lot of freedom festivals, yeah. uh, outdoor, you know, outdoor venues, um, do, do a lot of, uh, uh you know, in, you know, we do some in-store things like for some of our bigger dealers, we'll go yeah. and do like meet and greets, maybe even set up a, uh, a flatbed truck stage in the parking lot and play a, an hour gig or something. Yeah. Uh, do ride arounds here in town. I'm writing music still, um, recording. So um, you're not busy at all. That's what you're saying. No. And, and, and at night I put on a cake <laughs> and fight crime. So I've got that going too. But, you know, and that's why this, this condo, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you from home is, uh, is, is always been so good because I mean, I, I could get a call and be on a plane at six 30 tonight. Yeah. All I got to shut my door, um, you know, versus, uh, uh, you know, having a lot of, a lot to take care of in a big home, you know, in a homestead. But it, it's interesting. I talked, you know, Kevin Sorbo guy played Hercules. 
uh, I know the name, but the I don't actor, know the, yeah, uh, I interviewed him and he said the same thing. Like he was, fi- he used to film Hercules in New Zealand and he was, he had a condo here in, in, in LA and he's like, why am I like, I ha- he had a house and he's like, so he moved, he moved into a condo in Vegas. Yeah. Cause he's like, why am I, get, why do I have this big house in California paying California taxes and California, you know, everything. Yeah. But I'm not there for three, you know, but three months of the year. Yeah. So you got the condo now, in Vegas. You can, you, you know, it's kind of like it's a, it's a high rise. Um, if you know where broad, you know, where Broadway is all, yeah. I mean, it's right off Broadway. So if you, uh, if you come down from that bridge, which would be like zero in Broadway to first in Broadway, second in Broadway, you get to Tootsie's, which is like a, a sixth in Broadway. Yeah. And then Bridgestone's like eighth and Broadway. I live in a, a high rise at like 19th and Broadway. Okay. So you got I'm the just, Whole Foods over that on that side. Uh, Whole Foods is just across the highway from me. Whole Foods yeah. would be like uh, 12th and Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I walk there. I mean, I walk down to Whole Foods all the time. Yeah. Cause we, I, we, I've been to Nashville a few times and that's where we stayed. My, my, um, my wife's friend just opened up a theater on John Lewis, which is, I, th- I think, sixth. Yeah, and uh, and just uh, uh, Shiners. This is a show called Shiners. So if you ever get, very cool. Yeah, but so yeah. it's kind. Of, and and my daughter is now pregnant, so I'm going to be a grandpa in about five more months. Okay, so I'll be flying to, to Knoxville a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Got to see the grandbaby. Well, you fly into Knoxville, or do you fly into Nashville and drive over? A lot of people. I I fly into Nashville and drive. Yeah. Because the, the the flight, I got to rent a car either way. I do that. Like I had to st- go to um, geez, Idaho uh, Idaho Falls. So All I flew right. into I flew into Salt Lake City, and it was like the flight from Salt Lake to Idaho Falls was as much as the flight from L.A. to Salt Lake. Yeah, you know, because it's three flights a day or whatever, and you know, and I've flown to Twin Falls the same way. There's only two flights a day in Twin Falls: one in the morning, one at night. So we go, I, we go to our our factory in Provo. We fly fly into Salt Lake for right the car. Drive the hour in the Provo, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, but and then we have friends now in Nashville, so it's it's kind of yeah. kind of good that we well, can holler at me if you ever come to town. Yeah, well, I won't. You won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, come during the week, please. Yeah, I tell everybody yeah. come during the week. I was just I was just uh, Tuesday night. We just had a great time. A uh, place called the Local, and my friend that I write a lot with from Little Texas, Porter Howe, singer songwriter. Uh, uh, guitar player for Little Texas singer, uh, God bless Texas. Amy's back in Austin. Kick a little, what might have been, you know, all those big number one hits. Um, he did a showcase there, and his wife's working with a band uh, called Cross Atlantic, and they did a they did a showcase the same night, and they had a ride around. They had a blast. Yeah, Tuesday night, and it's like, I don't know how you beat this for a Tuesday. I went I went to the Roxy on Tuesday for a show. Oh, you know. okay. So it was pretty you- cool. <laughs> it, I mean, it was. I we when we went through COVID, and I'm going to ask you that next is when when we went through COVID. My wife and I, we were like, when when we get out of this, let's take advantage of as much yeah. as we can. So let's go back and so. I mean, for one, I support most of the people that have been on my show. So like, I just saw the Spinners two weeks ago because I interviewed Jesse from the Spinners. Cool. And um, but we want to get out and see as much as we can because now you realize it can be taken away at any time. Yeah, how how bad was COVID for you guys? Um, you know, COVID was first off, you know, me aside, so many people suffered through that. So many businesses, so many things uh, were devastating, and uh, I always, you know, I don't, I never want to forget that. For me, um, I still played some biker rallies. A lot of the biker rallies, they didn't care anyway. Yeah, and uh, we didn't care. We went and played. I mean, I. I particularly wasn't that for myself. I wasn't that worried about it. I worried about the elderly and sick and people with conditions and stuff, but I I didn't, I wasn't that worried about it personally, but uh, out of respect, uh, obviously for everyone who was, I did my best to to follow the mask mandates and everything. I wasn't one of these anti-mask people. I'm like, if they tell me I don't have to wear it, I'm not going to wear it, but I don't want to, you know, there's a 73 year old, nice lady in aisle four in the grocery store and she wants me to wear it. I'm not against the 73 year old lady. I'll wear it. Ain't put me out any, I'll, I'll do it. Um, so I, you know, it was, the, but, but back to your question. Um, so we played a little, obviously we didn't play much. Yeah. Um, but 
gun sales went through the roof through yeah, COVID. Everybody. I mean, safe sales went through the roof in COVID and we were busy. Uh, yeah. As far as hurting our business, um, it did not. Um, and I went back at the time in 2020, in the beginning of that, I still had a place in Kansas City where it's much more open and the high rise here became, this is not where you'd want to be during COVID. It had, uh, all the amenities were shut down, the pool was shut down, yeah. the lounge were shut down, only one person in an elevator at a time, unless it was your family. So you'd go and, you know, push the elevator button. I'm on the 12th floor. And, Somebody you know, be in it. Stop, someone's in there. Someone's in there. You couldn't have guests in the building if they didn't yeah. live in the building. So I went, I spent the whole year in Kansas City um, and, uh, you know, worked, just worked on American Rebel and was thankful that our product was still in demand. Yeah. And we were able to, to continue on. But uh, yeah, it was devastating to a lot of businesses and a lot of people. But it's interesting too. It, it, it... It, it seems like a lot of a lot of these successful people uh, made the best of it. I mean, even like a, a lot of touring musicians that I've talked to, they were doing voiceovers. They were doing recordings, you know, via emails. They were swapping files and all that. So they, but it gave them they, a chance. They were doing live performances within with their Venmo accounts. Yeah, you know, and and doing a lot of things and and. Um, we, even some of them would be in different places and they'd learn how to pass themselves together in yeah, shows. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people did find a way to make it, to make it work. There, there, it's, yeah. you know, it's all, it's all types, right? There's, 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 there was people like me that it actually just didn't really affect my business much. In fact, it hurt my music a little bit, but American rebel did great through it. Yeah. But there's, there's people who, it, it hurt a little, but not too bad. There's people that it really hurt, but they found another way, like the people you described. Yeah. Um, and then there was people who just took advantage of the fact that, hey, I don't have to work. I can get a check. I could work, but I don't want to. I'll take my check. And, you know, from one extreme to the other. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, I guess that's always the case, right? If you uh, if you look at enough of a multitude of people in a scenario, yeah. you have one, you know, one degree to the other. Yeah, I mean, I had a couple stores go out of business you know, because yeah. in California, we were really strict. Like we yeah. shut down this first and we opened up the last. So I, I literally had some accounts go out of business, you know? Yeah. And But I've talked to a lot of the people that, that I, I worked with and they're all, well, I, I got a job over here. I'm doing this now. I got, oh, I'm better. My wife's happy, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, it works out, but <laughs> at the, the time it sucked. Happy. Everybody's dog was happy. They got all kinds of attention. Well, yeah, and, you know, uh, it was interesting. I, if if I don't if I don't deliver goods to stores, I don't get paid. I'm 100 percent commission. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, man, I, I go, I don't know what we're gonna do. Well, guess what? My online business. I had a couple of accounts that had online stores. Yeah. They took off. Yeah. yeah. They went yeah. through the. I mean, literally, it was Christmas time for like six months. Yeah. That's so fantastic. good. Okay. Good. We people found things to do. You know, I would. One of the things uh, everybody talks about the COVID weight and the 20 or 30 pounds <laughs> I put other than others put on in, in Kansas city, they shut everything down like they did everywhere else. And one day my neighbor, like five, six, maybe the first weekend, if not the second weekend of being shut down, they raised their garage door and opened up the six foot bar and grill, meaning yeah. say, stay six foot away. And they put their their cooker out front, and uh, they said, "Hey, just bring your meat, cheese, have your burgers or steaks, chicken, or whatever, and throw it on the grill." And then the next thing you know, two hours down, another one, and then then by like three by like three or four or five weeks, and into everything being shut down in COVID, about half the houses in the neighborhood would open up their garage doors. They had a Mexican theme, and they had they were they had knife throwing in there. <laughs> <laughs> It was like four o'clock and I ain't even had a, you know, I ain't even popped one of popped the top off yet. What's going You know, there's only three, only three of the doors are open, but yeah, yeah it's crazy. One had, one had a disco theme and a disco ball. A little speakeasies around Kansas city. Yeah. But I mean, there was just garage doors open. Here you go. I mean, I was thinking, I don't, everybody's out anyway. I don't know what's going on here, but I get it. <laughs> we all got it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> What do you have coming up for 2023? Are you excited about the prospects of, of 2023? Yeah, you know, there's um, 
we'll have the new album out. Yeah. Uh, spring of 2023 will be probably my most uh, robust, packed full tour of, of my life. Um, we just have a lot of demand to play. We've got new music out. Yeah. Um, and we've got uh, some other bands. It's not all contracted up yet, but we'll be out with some some smaller and bigger bands, you know, on more yeah. more more of a, a full blown tour. Um, who knows? I mean, I can only imagine what's in store for American Rebel if we have a twenty three like we had a twenty two. Yeah. And you know, we went public to Nasdaq and raised some capital and did an acquisition and you know, substantially grew our business and, and we, you know, we're going to work hard to do the same in 2023. Um, so and, got all that, got daughter getting married and, and, uh, all yeah, there you of go. All right. For any, any listeners go to a reb, a R E B on NASDAQ. And you can, uh, a reb is our symbol. Our yeah. products are at American rebel.com. My music's at andyross.com and of course it's on spotify and apple music and amazon and in all digital you know formats i'm curious about uh, what do you think about the, the streaming business uh, end of it because i've talked to a lot of musicians they're not ha super happy about it but they also were back in the day when they were getting record sales and that's not happening anymore what, oh, what's kind of your take on it well i I've, I've got an inside track i think to the take i i I have my own opinions on a lot of things. And then I have what I call it. <laughs> and I think I have an educated opinion on this, but um, what happened first of all is uh, we all had albums and that was great. And cassette tapes, tapes came out. Yeah. And what the record industry enjoyed was even if I had Fleetwood Mac rumors album, I bought the cassette tape because you wanted to play the album in my car. Yeah. Then CDs came out. And even though I had the Fleetwood Mac album and I had bought the Fleetwood Mac Rumors cassette, you once it got that. on CD, I bought the CD because yeah, right. now I've got a CD player and albums are old news and I got a CD player. So the, the record industry sold that one album to a, to a customer as an album and then a cassette. We got full money and then again as a CD. The industry thought, well, now they'll buy the digital download. And they priced it at full big price. Yeah. They were selling $3.50 for a download of a song. And they priced themselves to a point where they thought that they would just roll that customer one more time at a, at, at a full, you know, $14, $18 a record or $18 for the DVD that they yeah. would pay for a digital download. And someone just gave them the finger and said, you know what, we, nice. there's another way we can share this music because it's digital and it ain't happening. Yeah. And what they could have done is price that, priced it down to where it was really cheap and economical to buy and people wouldn't have, wouldn't have fought so hard to go around it. Yeah. And they couldn't control it. And then when they tried to drop the price down to a it's dollar, and stuff, it was over. So, so that's one, one thought. Second thought is when, and I don't know how old you are, but you're, you're somewhere within some years to me, I'm assuming. 50, 55. Okay. So we're, we're close in age. Um, when we went to concerts, the, the, we, we bought $12 and $14 tickets, yeah. even $8 tickets, $12 to go see Journey. Well, the idea was you put out an album and then you go play as economically as possible to fill those stadiums and those arenas so I can play my new music for this audience. I'll play all my hits and four or five off the new record, and they'll go buy my record. Yeah. And I'll make money from them buying my record. Well, yeah. now no one makes money buying the record. So now the music's free, and it's $250 to go see the Eagles. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. 125 bucks to go see Tim McGraw. Now it's... They flip the script, give them the music. They'll come and pay an arm and a leg to go to the concert and they'll buy $30 t-shirts yeah. and $20 hats. So they, they've had to flip the script. That's, that's interesting. Cause uh, I literally didn't go see Chris Stapleton at the forum because I was like, I'm not paying $185 for the top section yeah. stage, stage, right. Where I can't even see him. I'm like, yeah. that's not, that's not happening. 
and I'm certainly well, not paying think, six hundred dollars for yeah, four seats. Think seat. about those tickets on the on the on the aftermarket too. Yeah. You know, they're paying. Uh, the Eagles came to to, uh, to Nashville, and uh, I was supposed to be out of town. I had an opportunity to buy a, some decent lower level seats, kind of a, in a pre buy thing, kind of for some lo- you know some local yeah. tickets they had set aside, and and uh, and I didn't. And because I wasn't going to be in town, then I, then all of a sudden something happened and I was in town. I mean, they, they had, they had good seats for three grand on, on the aftermarket. I'm like 3000 bucks. I mean, to get tickets even close to where I would have been, you know, yeah. they were, they were 800 to $1,200. And I ain't mad at them. I mean, you know, well, I wish the, ba- I wish the only way, I wish the band was getting that money. Cause they're not. Oh no. The whole, yeah, the whole aftermarket thing yeah. is just, it's just crazy to me. I, I don't, uh, I get it. You know, I would rather, if I, I if I want to go to a chiefs game, I'm a chiefs fan, go back to Kansas city to a chiefs game. I would, I would pay a high ticket price and go to one game and have yeah. a good seat versus going to four games and getting a bargain on the tickets or better price on the tickets, you know, yeah, sounds, you're not gonna make it I'd rather buy, yeah, I'd rather buy two, $400 tickets than, and go only, but I only go to one game. Yeah, if yeah. I'm going to do that, versus paying 150 bucks, 200 bucks, and going to four or five, because you still, I still have the travel to get there, um, the flight. I still have the, the tailgating cost and the food, and yeah. You know, so you're spending this much money anyway. So the ticket price is kind of absorbed. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a fifteen hundred dollar day, no matter how you slice it up. So it's, um, it's so I'll go to one, you know, yeah. and instead of all of them, but. Um, yeah, what, I mean, they, what, what jersey do you wear? You know, I, I don't really wear a jersey. I, I, uh, I want to see if I, you're a Kels I, fan or Mahomes or. No, I wear, uh, you know, I, I'll wear maybe something that's got Chiefs on it or the Chiefs logo, um, Chiefs hat, stuff like that. But I don't, I don't jersey up and I don't, I got you. I don't paint my face. But, you know, I wrote, um, I wrote and recorded the song that, that Mahomes used for the first uh, two, two years of his three years, but he started two years as a starter. The Showtime Strut song they played out at Arrowhead and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I wrote, I wrote, recorded that for, for Pat. <laughs> and uh, I got to go to both Super Bowls and, and uh, but you know, right now, you, you know, you got, you, you can't be one of those guys that like you have a, a contact and then, you know, like I'm not going to get a hold of Pat Mahomes right now and go, Hey, remember four years ago, yeah, yeah. That, you know, so, you know, he don't, he don't, he, he did me right. And, uh, you know, he don't need me hanging on him for, for life. Cause I, no. did, I did one thing. Well, I, I interviewed Tommy Townsend, who's the punter for the chiefs oh. and, uh, at, at him and his brother, his brother was the, the punter for the Titans, um, for a little bit, Johnny, but, uh, yeah. it's, you know, it's, 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 it's cool. But, and I still, I always promote my, my old guests, but I, I definitely don't. I'm the yeah. same way. Like, so who do you root for out there? Rams, Chargers? Char- Chargers. I grew Chargers. up in San- I grew up in San Diego, and so it's been. I haven't been a fan for a while now. It's been rough. Yeah, yeah. I follow the Rams. Well, you are, you uh, are in a division with the Chiefs, so it's going to be rough. I like the Chiefs. Um, F the Raiders. Um, not a big, not a big Broncos fan. I hate the no. Raiders. I grew up hating the Raiders, but yeah. You know, if if you we were going to, them. if you were going to Charger games and. I, I was going in 78, 79, 88. It was Eric Coriel. It was Kenny Stabler. It was John Madden. It was like, you just hate the Raiders. Like I, we used to go to home games down when they were in San Diego. And like, my dad would like have to protect. I mean, there was fights every Raider game. Just the way yeah. it was. Yeah. Well, you saw, you saw, uh, you know, Devante push that yeah. meet the guy down on the, on the sideline. I feel bad. I don't think that's his true character. No, but- he definitely had gotten uh, he had definitely gotten frustrated at that game, but yeah, uh, yeah, I was supposed to go to that, and then I, I couldn't. I ended up not getting back to Nashville in time to make my flight to Kansas City. Yeah. Sometimes you know that's bus travel, right? I mean, man, you, you bus travel. Um, first of all, you if, if it's a, if it's an eight hour car ride, you better add yeah. a minimum of two hours yeah. to the bus drive, and then it's an hour to stop and fuel. You know, it holds so much fuel. It's yeah. and the, the bus driver's got to get some beef jerky and you know and flirt with the lady behind them, no, kid. But uh, you know, it, it's uh, 
it, it's a it's a much longer drive. And and then you know the bus driver might get sleepy and just decide he needs to pull over and take a six hour nap. Yes, sir. And you're two hours from home, and you're thankful. Hey, that's what I want you to do. If you're tired, I don't want you driving tired. But you don't know. You, you leave and think you're going to be home in eight hours, and you're home in sixteen hours. You don't you don't know. You're not in charge. I was gonna because I I have an RV that I travel in, in, within the state. And yeah. it's, 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 a, it's just a slower drive. I mean, yeah, it, it just yeah. is, but you know, what's it like? I mean, when you're on a bus with like six guys or 10 people, whatever, however many you have, I mean, you don't get to control. That, that's the thing that I think would bother me. Not cause I've never done that, but like, you're literally at, at the mercy of the driver and, and the schedule. You yeah. Know? Like for me, like I sit there and go, Hey, you know, I'm going to pull over here and take some pictures. Or I'm going to check this out or see what this is about. No. And you're not doing that if you're part of that bigger, bigger group. Yeah, it's that's a whole nother uh, great question because it's a whole nother element of travel that yeah. you, you wouldn't even dream to think of. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example of this part of the story. But Doug Cahan, my bass player, who is an amazing musician. I mean, he's, he's just unbelievable to have good showman, good energy, backup vocals, plays, plays fantastic good band leader. He can hear, you know, if we have a substitute guitar player or something, he can, you know, in rehearsal, Hey, no, it goes, it goes to the one, you know I mean? He's just, just yeah. a great guy, but he'll only do the gig if, if he knows exactly who else is in the band. And he's like, Andy, everybody plays good. Everybody that you would recommend, yeah. I recommend Doug Grau would recommend plays good, yeah. but I'm not spending eight hours on the bus with that guy or this guy, you know, yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the hang. He like, he like, just like us, yeah. he'd do the gig for free. Yeah, Who am yeah. I, is the guy going to be a drunk and idiot on the bus? Are we going to have to pull over every 20 minutes for him to have a cigarette? Um, is he, you know, I'm a married guy, not me, but Doug, I'm a yeah. married guy. You know, I'm not hanging out at the, you know, for a party after party, after the gig for two hours on the bus with a bunch of drunks. You know, you know, who's who's yeah. in the bus? Are they clean? You know, and yeah, everybody, yeah. Every, you know, they pick up after themselves. And so you, you finally get like a group of guys that are like minded. You can't have two guys that want to party and have an after party and, you, and two married guys that want to keep everything tidy and get back home to their family. It's not going to work. Yeah. It has nothing to do with how they play, how they gel as musicians. It's how that bus not going to work, you know. Um, so that's interesting. You know, yeah. yeah. A couple of guys like Doug, he might have a couple of beers, but he don't want to sit and talk to a drunk all night. Yeah. You know, um, there's someone who's being loud, you know, turning up the stereo and, you know, in the bus and just, you know, so it's, it's a fit, right? You gotta, yeah. you know, you get to, you know, you're, you're stuck in the bus together, but you gotta, you gotta pick the right people. And we've got a, we've got, I've got a great band. I mean, everybody's singular minded about how we conduct our, ourselves and people just out of respect to you stay, you know, we stay in our box a lot, we get on our computers and laptops and watch, yeah. watch uh, podcasts and, and, and things online. And, you know, everybody tries to stay out of everybody's way. Everybody try to treat everybody like they'd like to be treated. We've got that group because we got an older band. I'm an older guy, you know, yeah. more group. Well, that's what, like if you were to, if you were to pick up a new guitarist, he might be a younger guy, and you're like, eh, it's not gonna. I mean, well, you don't you don't know till you till you travel with him, right? Yeah, I mean, you don't. Yeah. You just don't know. Um, thankfully, I've got three different guitar players I can go to, two or three different bass players, three different drummers, two keyboard players. So if, if my main guy can't do it, I kind of know the sub real well, and yeah. I know the sub real well. And uh, a lot of these guys, too, that they're, they're so entrenched in Nashville and they're so entrenched in the music scene. If Doug Cahan, the guy I just mentioned, yeah. basically uh, couldn't make the gig or some reason, just a couple of days for the gig, had a death in the family or something, something happened. Yeah. He could call me and say, look, I got my buddy subbing for me on this gig. He's a great guy. You're good hands. I'm going to go over the material with him. You won't miss a beat. He's good hang. You know, he would, yeah. he would, he would do that. Well, you're in the right uh, city. Yeah. For, yeah. For having backups. 
Yeah. And they all know, they all got friends. Hey, man, I, I'm in a bind. Can you cover this yeah. gig for me? And my cousin yeah. passed away, you know? So, yeah. uh, but yeah, you, uh, you definitely got to have the right mix of people. A lot of people in the band and in and, and bands are married. Yeah. And we have social media. And this guy, <laughs> like, look, this, this unmarried guy who likes to run around. Yeah. And, <laughs> me, um, you know, you can't be having, if you're going to bring girls on the bus and take pictures or even bring them on the bus, A, B, put it on your Facebook. Yeah. That's not going to fly with my home life. Yeah, yeah. That we, we have to conduct ourselves. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate to get to do all this travel, be in this bus, play all this music and my wife's understanding to all of it. Yeah. But you're not getting me in trouble with my home life. And so there's, you know, guys in my band are like that. I, I, like, I got some, I got some stories I could share. <laughs> well, I, I mean, yeah, like break had... up, breaking up, like, yeah, it's just, I mean, just stupid things and all through social media. It's like, yeah. I, I always, I always tell the young people, I'm like, we did the stupid stuff you're doing now, but we just didn't record it. Thank yeah, God. Exactly. Yeah, thankfully exactly. we didn't record it. Yeah. They're just good memories. Now we don't have yeah. the actual actualities of what happened that night, but. Well, yeah, you, you just gotta, you just gotta handle it the right way, you know? Yeah. Um, and you gotta, you got, I mean, the bus driver, he, he don't want to hang out after the gig. Nah. He went and took a nap. It's 11 o'clock. Go. Go. I don't want to set here till 1am, yeah. you know? So it's not as, uh, it's not as crazy out there as, you know, we got some like-minded people that like to get home. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not married, yeah. and, you know, but I, I got to, I got to be respectful to the people that are in my band that are, and yeah. what would, you know, so that's a whole nother travel etiquette thing you have to learn. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's true though. Right. I mean, cause we yeah. do the same thing when I'm, when I'm out and we go to a rodeos or events, Yeah, you know, the young guys, they want to go out and, and, and hit the town. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not doing that. I, yeah. You can do, do whatever you want, but I'm not doing that. Yeah. And uh and then the next day, oh my girlfriend saw where I was at. She's really mad at me. And I'm like, Yeah, dude, why would you put that on social media? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, trust me, I've 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 told the bus to go on without me a handful of times and got a flight the next morning and go and went home. So but uh but I didn't put my bandmates in a in an awkward position. Yeah. Can you hang on one second? I just want to I close my door. landscapers I don't yeah know how much is going to get picked up but you know um with with when you're on the road so much what do you do for diet and and exercise wow that's uh that's a tough one because i know uh, first of all that bus is not going into town and driving around trying to find a particular restaurant They're that bus that bus, his favorite stop is Cracker Barrel. And Flying J, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you know, you got truck stop food. Uh, the bus driver loves Cracker Barrel because they have RV parking and they're right, always right off the highway. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you 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 definitely don't have uh, your your choice of of you know of everything that's offered to you between here and there. Um, we keep you know, and obviously you keep a lot of water on the bus and the coolers. Yeah, you know, I mean the coolers, you know, the bus and the, the refrigerators and the bus have everything yeah. you could want from from bottled water to, to beer to you know uh, whatever what, whatever these things are called I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I don't either they taste they taste kind of like vinegar and lemon and <laughs> I don't know they're, they're, they sell them at Whole Foods and they tell you they're good for you so uh, so it's got a bunch of those and stuff in it but yeah. and everybody and all the guys are different too no one really wants to eat that much before we play. Some of the guys, you know, they'll, they'll get their food out of catering and they'll just make a plate and yeah. they'll have it on the way home. But there's no, there's not really a lot of options. Um, you know, I would say 80% of our stops to eat are in a cracker barrel. Yeah. Do you do, you, do you any exercising outside? I mean, you got to sing. So, I mean, you got to keep your lungs going. Yeah. I'm not, not on the road. I do. I do when I'm home, but once, you know, once I'm on the road, Honestly, the healthiest thing I can do once we're on the road, when we're on the road, the, the, the main thing, if I had over diet and exercise is try to find sleep. Yeah. Um, 
it's not easy Good sleep. sleeping going down the highway. <laughs> um, you know, the bus is, it, it, it's almost like being on a, on a boat, you know, the bus is, you know, especially as you get back towards your bunks yeah. and, you know, you're not, it's not like sleeping in your bed at home. So you don't, you know, you don't get sleep, you hit rumble strips, you know, stops and starts and, and, yeah. you know, and it's, it's just, you just don't, the quality of sleep is not good. So if you can, if you can catch a three hour nap or find, you know, find time to get some extra sleep, that's about the best you can do. We got sound checks. I mean, sound checks, we may not play them nine at night, but sound checks are like noon and one, you yeah. know, it's not, it's not like we can just sleep all day. So we got to get up and do that. And then there's usually a meet and greet. Um, the thing that like this Rocktoberfest, I'm playing it, but they've also asked me to MC it. So there's, oh, there's four bands, no, three bands that go on before me. And then I go on and then Stone Scent and then the Davison brothers, but I've got it MC and introduce all the way up to it, all the way up to it. Um, you know, and then sound checks and, so, you know, and we'll leave, you know, we'll leave there at 11 o'clock at night and head back to Nashville and, you know, try to sleep. That's it's a, hard. It's a long day. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I, I, that's part of the, the, I guess, you know, a lot, like when I go to a show and I show up at eight, eight 30, I don't know that you've been up since, you know, the day before, or, or, you, you know, like you said, you're sleeping in a bus and all that. Yeah. No, I mean that's where you just have to turn on your switch and say, "Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a performer, entertaining now." Yeah, but you're that, tired as hell. You're hungry. You've been, you know, that the adrenaline to play is easy to do. Yeah. And put, you know, there's just something about, you know, I don't want to get corny here because I'm over exaggerating this, but you know, when Superman puts on his cape, yeah. he's different than Clark Kent. And once you start pulling out them guitars and putting on. You know, I don't wear crazy stage clothes, but I have stage clothes and the music comes up on the bus and you might crack open a beer. And, you know, it, it's not hard to get to get excited for that hour, hour and a half. Yeah. You're getting to play. Um, but, the you know, the rest of the time is what's killer. And then you also got to remember, you know, I'm not Tim McGraw. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not that big a, yeah. a, a yeah. scale of artists. So I don't, you know. I don't land at the private airport and get catered, do the show and then back to the airport and gone. And, and God bless him for being able to do that. He's a super, super, super person and works really hard. Um, but you know, we, we got to do a lot of our own grunt work, you know, yeah, yeah. My, my guitar players put their amps on stage, you know, um, I have to do my own sound check and check my mics and, and, uh, you know, make sure the intro yeah. music's ready and talk to the sound guy and, and uh, if we if we do stay at a hotel, you know, we carry our own bags and check ourselves in. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, we're not we're not out there at that level yeah. of, of what some of the you know some of the big. I've got friends that you know travel different than, than I do. Um, you know, Lee Bryce, he's got a crew of people and yeah. and need and, and uh, you know they're they're super great crew, but you know there's there's thirty plus people on that crew. It's, it's you know, interesting. I, when I was a bus driver and a tour manager, <laughs> dude, when, I, when I was 18, I, I went to, I saw Hank Williams Jr. And uh, my, my friend was friends with the, the Bama band, which was his backing band. And um, I, so I went to the concert twice and I never met him. And I mean, yeah. I went, I went to the, I went to the hotel. We took the tour bus over from the hotel to, to this, uh, to the amphitheater. But yeah. H Hank never, never did that. No, he's he ain't there. Yeah, yeah. So we we literally would show up. Uh, Waylon Jennings opened up for him one year, so I'm like, this is cool. I was like 19, right? And I'm like, so I'm, I'm meeting Wolfman Jack backstage in the green room and all that. And I go, where's Hank? And I can't hear you. <laughs> and I'm like, he's on in like five minutes. He'd walk off. He'd, he'd drive over, get off, walk on stage. The yeah. band had already started. Like the band oh, yeah. was doing the warm up. He's not even at the at the arena yet. Yeah. And like he'd show up. And walk on stage, do a singing, and walk off, get into his car, and leave. I, I've I've met him a couple of times. I'm good friends with his stage manager, guitar tech Jason Sutton, and I write. He's uh, Jason Sutton and his brother Mark Sutton, our brother Trouble, and I write with both those guys. And uh, yeah, Hank Hank shows up at the very last minute, and he's yeah. he's. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a quick one if we have time. If, if it can't make the episode, but um, when I had my hunting show. 
I traveled the world and hunted several times with, with Ted Nugent. Wow, okay. I mean, we went on several hunts together and we did some, you know, went on some music uh, together and uh, we were getting ready to go on a hunt, but he would, he would hunt during the week and then sometimes do shows on weekends. And he was out with Toby Keith. They had done something for the troops at the same time. And then, and they decided, Hey, you know what? your music and my music ain't all that different anymore. We have the same audience. Yeah. You know, people who grew up listening to me or listening to you, let's tour together. So that they did some dates, Ted Nugent opening up for Toby Keith. Wow. And Ted was, Ted was so, you know, Ted's always just no. going to say what he wants to say. So, you know, he would get on and he would play and he would go and do his thing and do his show. And then you know, he'd just, you know, in between songs, just rip off some, crazy you know ted nugent rift and he'd say to the crowd now we're in arenas now because we're playing with toby keith right yeah. or ted is ted is and he'd do this big riff and he'd go you know i used to play country music till i got my hand out of the cast <laughs> and he would just jam at him the whole time so so ted's manager at that time his tour manager was also named ted they called him ted too and ted too told me he said look ted's gonna go on and then Toby's going to go on. Toby's going to come off and they're going to bring Toby back out for an encore. But right. before Toby right. goes on for an encore, Ted's going to go out instead of Toby and play the Star Spangled Banner on his guitar. Then Toby's going to come out. They're going to do two songs together. Ted's going to leave. Toby's going to do one by himself at the, at the end of the show. Yeah. And that's the night. When you hear, he's telling me, when you hear the Star Spangled Banner being played, you get to this door, right here, this door, behind the stage door. Because in two songs, when he comes off, we're throwing a blanket over him, and we're out that door, and we're getting in the, a, a minivan. Yeah. And if you ain't here, we're leaving you. So I don't care where you are, who you're with, what you're doing out there. You in front of the house, Star Spangled Banner comes on, you be here. So, all right, I'll, no problem. I heard, you know, Ted came on to the Star Spangled Banner. I've worked my way backstage, stood there by the door. He was already into the next song, played one more, comes off. They throw this big blanket around him. He came to see them running us out. There we go out and we get in the back of this minivan. And the minivan starts to drive off. And I mean, he's really covered up like he's kind of, kind of covered up in this blanket, like he can't find his way out of it. And uh, finally, his head comes out of that and he's just laughing. His, his, he's just laughing like you know hysterically and i and i said i said what's so funny man and he said toby's gonna be stuck in traffic for hours <laughs> exactly <laughs> he he planned it so he could get off stage and, and be gone in, in nugent's mind toby was holding the crowd for him yeah. playing another song so me and him could skate off and not get stuck in traffic that's awesome <laughs> i think great. i think I think that's what Hank was doing too. Cause oh, yeah. the band would still be finishing up, you know, did it, you know, trailing off. Yeah. He's gone. He's in his car and he's out the he's he's gone. Yeah. Gone, gone. Yeah. yeah, he's he's completely away from the arena and yeah. any possible traffic thing halfway to the airport. Yeah, yeah. Where the crowd gets to the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. He had, he had the best cowboy boots I ever saw. I'll tell you about that offline. But <laughs> he, he had he had he had because he's a big hunter. Yeah. And uh, and I guess when you're when you kill the animal, you're allowed to skin it. And so he, a lot of the animals he 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 killed over in Africa, he he put on boots. And I saw him. I was like, Damn. yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, hey, I appreciate the time, but I, I, I'll let you get out of here and enjoy whatever time free time you have. Perfect. But, I'm headed over to see those people at Burning Ground here at one o'clock. So I'll oh, tell them we had a great interview. And I appreciate I'll tell that. Them pay for you and look, hope to do it again sometime. And uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll reach out to you um uh, through Instagram. Um, uh, are you are you trying to reach out to me on that for, on for that the boots? Page? Yeah. Um, can I, can I just give you my number off uh, off recording? Yeah, yeah. So we'll finish it up and then uh, what's the best way for people to follow you? Is it Instagram, Andy Ross? You know, all my social media uh, is all Andy at Andy Ross Rebel. So okay. if you look on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, through so any, anywhere you're looking for me, I have the same handle at Andy Ross Rebel. All right. And I'll make sure I put that on my website as well. So it'll be easy. Perfect. 
for people to, to get. I appreciate the time, bud. Hey, have fun, man. Look All forward right. to it. All right, boss.